Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the new K2 Special Effects, the board that replaces the Cool Bean. This board features K2's directional rocker profile, which is rocker in the nose, then completely flat back through the tail. This is gonna give it more of a surfy feel. You don't have to load it up, and you're gonna get ease of entry in and out of turns from that rocker, as well as more optimal powder float. This board is available in 140, 144, 148, and 152. I rode this board at Rapo Basin on a day that was overcast skies with snow occasionally falling. There was heavy pow off the run, soft creamy groomers, death chunder, push mounts, kind of just typical spring-like conditions. And I rode it with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my Rome Black Label bindings. Okay, so clearly you have a directional flex to this board. Now with that said, it's somewhere around a middle of the road directional flex. If anything, it's a little bit softer. So what you get is softer nose that progressively starts to stiffen up just outside the insert pack all the way to the tail with a moderate amount of torsional give to it so you can really twist it. When it comes to stability, that nose will be flapping. You'll just notice that, that rocker just doesn't really do anything to help stop it from flapping. And realistically, the most stable section of this board is from the middle all the way back through the tail. And you really notice that when you're planing on pow and you're just really back foot steering, that's when it's gonna push through stuff. The nose doesn't push through. It sort of just flaps, bends back, and then slaps down on top of it. You do get a little added stability just because of the width of this board, but it's not enough to really be like, oh, this board's crazy stable. At the end of the day, it's stable enough where it counts if you keep your knees bent, but comparing it to the Cool Bean, which is what it replaces, it's not as stable. With this board being predominantly flat where you're anchored to it, i.e. your binding mounts, you get a skate-like pop to this board. You just sort of roll back off the tail and it springs. It's very easy to engage and for the size of this board and what it is, you can actually send a roller, cat track gap, rock gap, whatever, with ease. You don't really have to worry about it. You roll in, you snap off the tail, and you're good to go. All right, so what kind of butters can you do with this thing? Pow butters, that's what I recommend. Now, what you need to know is you got 3D shaping in the nose and you got that rocker. You're gonna use more weight than you think to actually leverage on that rocker when you pop the 180. And when you do, you wanna make sure you stay centered. If you're just a little off kilter, that 3D shaping and just the shape of the board takes over, it gets a little hooky and wonky with the tail. Go fast, lean back, and be prepared to just be straight up and down with nothing there for you as you just go right across. It's really not a board for buttering, but then again, neither was the Cool Bean, and I love buttering on that thing, so, you know, I guess someone likes to butter on boards like this. So when it comes to carving, this board's a little unique. You've got that 3D shaping in the nose, you got taper, your volume shifted, it's flat, so with that said, it's got an easy roll edge to edge. It's not precise, it's not quick and nimble. It's more laid back, subtle nuance. The best way to describe it is like taking a boat on the water, getting it up to speed, and starting a plane, and then you just crank the wheel as hard as you can. Yeah, it's gonna turn, but it's not like a quick turn where you're doing, you know, where you just feel it on edge. It's more like It's very surfy in its nature. Now, this board can carve but the dynamic of getting it to carve is a little bit different. This board initiates right outside the front foot, so you're gonna grip it right where the hyper taper meets the sidewall. That's right where it contacts and starts to dig in. And then as you initiate, you're gonna to wanna to disengage that front foot and basically steer this board from the middle back or if anything, more on that back foot. It's a very rear foot steering board, especially when you're driving a carve. If you're doing a deep, hard, aggressive carve, that's pretty much where all the power comes from, and you're gonna notice that. You lose a little bit of the tail to push yourself out of that turn because you have so much nose, so little tail. You need to keep your weight back so the nose isn't dragging. It's good for short, tight, quick setup turns. It's good for surfy turns, but if you wanna have a deep, hard, aggressive carve, you change your dynamic. You've gotta be a little more cognizant of how it actually engages. It can do it. It's not bad at it, but it's not as comparable to the Cool Bean, which is a board that I own, so I know what I'm talking about. It's a board that I ride regularly. It's just not the same. It's just a little bit softer. It disengages and engages 
a little bit more mellow. Who is this board for? The POW chasing free rider that enjoys to carve every now and then. At the end of the day, the special effects replaces the Cool Bean, a board that I own, a board that I love. You get a pointier shape which changes how it funnels out the powder, especially with that 3D in the nose. So it's really just funneling it out. It changes that whole powder dynamic. It's torsionally softer, which changes how it actually carves. It's not as rigid. It doesn't grip as aggressively. In my mind, the Cool Bean had been around for a while. This is the perfect direction to take this for everyone. It becomes a more surfboard, playful, little bit more versatile of a volume shift directional deck. At the end of the day, it's a solid ride and you need to be checking it out. Comparable boards, the Rosnal Sushi, the Yes 420, the Amplid Morning Glory. Binding recommendations, the K2 Lean AT, the Now Brigade, the Rome Vice. This has been my review of the K2 Special Effects. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.